Hello everyone, it is Teacher Marianne from HelloTeacherMarianne.com and on this channel you'll find videos all about earning an income from home and teaching online where I'm bringing to you valuable tips, insight, and need-to-know information. I just want to um, share with you today exactly how I walk through my lesson as far as sharing my materials. I've had a lot of questions lately. I recently did a, a video on Google Slides and how I make my Google Slides presentations for um, one of my ongoing classes. And then um, I did also a video on how I use Canva for those, um, for that particular ongoing class as well. And then I've had a lot of questions come in, but how do you actually like incorporate that in the lesson? How do you get it up there? And how do the students see it? And, you know, kind of, um, taking something down and then putting something else back up and you know just how does it work and I know as a, a new teacher on OutSchool and just using the Zoom platform for the first time to teach um, that is for me that was the most intimidating part and I know for a lot of you that's the most intimidating part you've got the content and you've got the amazing ideas and you've got the excitement to go and teach these awesome classes. It's just the technology part of it that's like the hang up. And so I just really wanted to kind of walk you through. Here's how I do it. As always, this is just a, a showing you my experience. Every video is just from me either doing the best research that I can do or pulling from my own experience and sharing with you. Um, and so I am not suggesting that you make your classes go this way. I, I think it would be a completely boring experience for out school students if we all did the same thing. So that is not the purpose of this video. I know that out school is so big on everyone be yourself. And I love that about this company, bring you to the table. So this Again, this video is not for you to copy. Uh, certainly, I'm just putting this out there in good faith that the content's not going to be copied, but I am also just um, wanting to make sure that I get the point across that this is not for you to even copy this format, but just to show you the kind of technology um, part of it, like as far as how it's being used and just kind of um, like the behind the scenes, how do you set up Google Slides? If you want to make your own Google Slide presentation, how do you um, set up using a worksheet from Canva in your class and that sort of thing? So that's what this video is all about. I hope that it's helpful for you. So the very first thing that I'm going to do is um, I'm just going to uh, share my screen with you. So the first thing that you need to know before you, if you are using share screen for anything, if you're going to use a Google Slides or a worksheet or both, um, you've got to have whatever you want your kids to see when you share your screen. It has to be pulled up already open on your computer because um, when you hit share screen, a little box is going to come up and then you're going to see the different things that are open on your computer and you choose one of those things. And now, it, now I think I have everything pulled up now, open on my computer. So again, this is what you wanna do before you go into um, your class. You wanna spend a few minutes. That's why it's important to leave about 15 minutes or so between classes in case one of your classes runs long. Um, you've still got plenty of time to close out anything from that previous class and open everything you need for that new class and, you know, just kind of um, go through the checklist of things that you want to do before class. I also have a video on that of uh, class tips for before, during, and after classes. So if you're not sure what you need to be doing before class, check out that video. Okay, so let me go ahead and share my screen again. And I'm just going to, when I hit share screen, now I can see everything that I just opened up on my computer screen. It's a little story that I created on Canva. So that is the first thing that we do together is we read a story and I have the students listen for words with the at sound. You've got a bar going across your screen and on that bar you can click 
annotate and when you click um, annotate then you can choose to draw and then I'm going to ask you know one by one um, can you give me a word with the at sound can you look at the pictures can the pictures give you clues and so just one by one as they would tick off words that I would circle the words and then we would um, start familiarizing ourselves with the at words that we're going to be working on in today's lesson now while I'm up here um, some of these students do know how to annotate which just means write on your white screen so I um, always above on your screen where it says you are screen sharing if you hover above that you are screen sharing bar then you will get a list of options and you go over to more and you click disable participants annotation so that only you can write on this worksheet so that's the first thing we do and then I just click after we go through this story I click stop share you know all of us are just in the regular zoom and then I, I you know praise them just kind of however I want to transition and then we go to our next worksheet a share screen again it's from another canva worksheet and so I'm going to choose this one this time that I opened up and I'm going to make it big and uh, at this point the students are muted and we've already gone over my spill this is also in my um, before during and after class video but um, we've already gone over my spill of how how I manage the mute and unmute button and so I'm going to call on individual turns at this point and um, they're going to help me find all of the pictures that have the at sound and um, we're going to go through this picture and then we'll go through some non-examples and we'll say the the um, picture bird hmm, at bird no birds not an at word hmm, at hat Yes, I stop share again, transition to my next activity, explain what I want them to listen for in this next activity, make at words. So again, all I did was I closed my, um, I, I pressed stop share and I went back to regular Zoom and then I just hit screen share again and I chose one of my other options that I had pulled up and this is um, I have got three Google slide options pulled up here because I have three different Google slides made for this one class may or may not have time for all three of these I'm going to go ahead and put this in present mode I'm going to click down here the pointer in the bottom left you've got some options on Google slide and I like to use the pointer so I can kind of direct them with this little red pointer on the screen and um, I explained that we're going to make at words and so I just have created again how to create these Google slides is in that video um, how to I think it's something like how to create Google slides in your classroom that I did just about a week or so ago but we're going to practice reading the words rrr, at what's the word yes rat we're going to go through my google slides like this and create words and see if we're correct by looking at the picture um, this is going to be individual turns um, again i may depending on the group unmute everyone for this activity uh, depending on the background noise level and just let them call out the word if they can sound it out it just really depends on the group how often you mute how often or how, for how long you leave on unmute but we're going to go through this um, this uh, activity and it's going to go pretty quickly because I just want to set them up for then our next activity which is going to be writing our at words again this is another worksheet that was created on Canva and again I'm going to annotate and draw and the students this is the um, worksheet that I have uploaded in the classroom so before class I upload the worksheet that we're going to be doing that day now I do this two times uh, I always upload the worksheet that we're going to be doing like so if if 
today was week one, then at the end of class, in the classroom, I would thank the parents for bringing their learners to class that day. You know, um, I would leave some personal comments and then I would say, attached to this message is the worksheet we'll be doing next week. And so this, the parents have it that early, a week ahead of time. And then I always upload it the morning of the actual class a week later because for any new enrollees that come in after that last class they're not going to see all the previous class comments and they won't see this worksheet so i always upload it again for last minute enrollees um, now for one-time classes you can just attach the worksheet that you're going to use to the um, when you're creating that class you can just attach that worksheet um, you can attach a file for parents to see when they enroll and then they can download it there for ongoing classes because i don't want to attach every single nine worksheets um, i just do it you know that way so Again, we would, however you want to do a worksheet or whatever kind of worksheet you want to do, but we practice writing our sounds and I practice, um, I, you know, I will model how to write the sounds. Um, at this point, during our transition activity, one of our transition activities is to actually write the sounds in the air and we practice chanting like C says, K, and we all write with our finger S says, just to warm up and get our brains thinking about writing. And then so um, that would be another activity. And then we would go through that. Uh, that probably takes the most time. The worksheet where we write always takes the most amount of time, uh, but that takes care of all of the the three different worksheets that I pulled up from Canva and now I would again go to um, I would again go to another Google slide and um, this is where we do rhyming words so again um, this is usually the activity that we end on and so I would pull up a um, explain to them what rhyming words are this again moves pretty quickly and then usually by the time we get to this i only have a minute or two left and so i will say um, okay guys this is our last game it's so much fun for this game i need everyone to give me thumbs up or down so listen big i will say the words you give me thumbs up if you hear at in both words you give me thumbs down if you do not hear at in both words okay and then we would just kind of go through it like that and then um, the computer will tell us if they are rhyming words or not and so we got to go through this slide and um, so that's that's uh, just another activity and then I did make one more activity beginning reading classes can can even though you know there are um, classes that have kind of this similar titles, they can really be on so many varying levels. So sometimes when parents sign up their child for a beginning reading class, they may think that it's um, more advanced than it really is. And sometimes the class is too advanced than they thought it would be. Um, so I always just kind of try to have enough material, material to cater um, to who might be in my class. And so this is another, um, activity that I have added on in case we have more time. And so this activity really is um, just using this, um, you know, chart to sort am and at words. Now this activity would come, um, it, I could do it in this acti in this lesson, or I could wait until after I have taught the am words, and then I could bring it back in. Um, that's on another week, like week seven, I believe, or something like that. Um, but in a chart setting or in any drag and drop activity in Google Slides, you can't have it on present mode. So that would be the one thing to remember there. And so we would just go through the pictures. If they don't know what the picture is, then um, I would just drag the picture to the middle and let them know if they don't know this this is yam, hmm, am or at, hmm, and, and this is probably one where I would try to leave the students unmuted and let them call out, am, yes, and we would just go through, hmm, bat, am or at, 
that yes and so we would just go through the pictures that way and that is what I do and at the end I stop sharing everything I wrap up my lesson um, in a in a really fun way um, and just try to leave in a very positive note I um, okay if anyone has to go ahead and sign off thank you so much for coming I hope to see you next week you did awesome and then if anyone wants to tell me one thing I'll stay for a few minutes and everyone can tell me one thing because with this age group four to seven year olds usually they want it, they're dying to tell you something and so usually at this point I've told them a few times remember you can tell me after class thank you you're being so patient and so I want to be sure that I always allow them that time um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. That's kind of how I do a typical uh, lesson if it's that particular beginning reading lesson. Um, and then I've got another um, older uh, reading fluency lesson that I've recently created. And again, I'm going through sharing screen using um, uh, worksheets and um, Google Slides and um, actual readers that they can print out like a leveled reading passages that they can print out that we're going to do work with um, so but but kind of the same thing using Google Slides using a printout and then using um, worksheets that I've created to help us um, the worksheets really just do cre create that interactive experience um, for the students so anyway I hope this helps um, I hope this answers questions that you had and remember um, you can do it it. it might change your life and I'm your biggest cheerleader. Okay guys, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.